Lee Morris, you just had to ruin it for the rest of us, didn't you? If you don't know what I'm talking about, F-Stoppers recently posted an article where they kind of showed how you can print out a media badge to get media rates when you travel. Now, this is something I was contemplating making a video about for quite a while, actually, because it's a really helpful tip. But it's one of those tips that the moment you reveal it and you tell other people to do it, people are going to take advantage of it. And that was my biggest fear, is that there'd be a lot of people who would take advantage of this, and then all the airlines would terminate these policies or change them significantly. And the reason you'd want to do this is very obvious. When you're traveling with video equipment, photography equipment, you have extra bags because you have your clothes and you have all the gear. And if you're doing video work, like I'm often doing, you have a lot of extra gear that's probably bigger than the airlines would like and heavier than the airlines would like. But you've got to deal with it. It's for work. And so quite a few of the airlines will actually give you discounted rates or they won't charge you for the excess weight or the oversized bags. Now, certain airlines do this better than others. I personally fly Southwest pretty frequently. So if you've ever seen any of my behind the scenes videos where I'm traveling, usually flying Southwest because they do tend to have the best deal in terms of upcharges for media. Now, in order to get the media rates, you have to prove that you're a media person, but there's so many different types of media nowadays that really, what kind of credentials does everyone have? There's no universal ID system for production people. So it's not like there's some standard that you'd have to meet. And so what Lee Morris did was he made up kind of a, a spoof badge, but that followed all the things that you would need to have on there to look legit. And his whole point was that making something, even though it's a joke, at least having it so that, you know, because they're checking the little box, you know, the airline people, they're just making sure you have all your ducks in a row. If you have that badge, it helps. And I've actually done the same thing. I've printed off my own media badge, you know, make it, making it look official, it has my name on there, organization, and it says media. And oftentimes they've asked, you know, where are your credentials? And I'll take out the badge, get it laminated so it looks nice. And that usually works. Sometimes they'll also ask for a business card. But if you have that, you're usually pretty good, as well as if the bags look like they're media bags, that is also helpful. If you have suitcases that are just generic suitcases, probably not going to be as easy. You might have to open them up, show what's inside. And if there's clothes in there, that may be a problem. So if you look like your media, you got the badge, you got the business card, all things are good. Now, my fear is that the moment you tell people about this, there's people who are going to take advantage of it because it is a pretty good deal. You know, oftentimes you can have stuff that's over 50 pounds, you can have bigger bags, and they're not penalizing you for that. So when people know that they can do that and they just need a fake badge to get away with it, well, it means there's a lot more likely that people are going to abuse the system, they're going to take advantage of it, and then the airlines are going to look at it and see all these people running as media and then I say, wait a second, we need to review this policy, we need to change it, we need to charge them more, whatever it is. And that's the situation you don't want. So I'm a little bummed that this has been exposed over on F-Stoppers. It's a, it's a pretty easy thing to figure out if you're kind of in, in the know and you're traveling quite a bit. You can just look up the airlines and their media policies. But the moment things become widespread, that's more and more people who may potentially take advantage of it. And that's just, it's never a good thing. You don't want, you know, a couple bad apples to ruin it for the rest of us. Who knows? Maybe that won't happen. Maybe it'll be okay. I would encourage you, if you are looking for media rates, do it on the up and up. Do it for real. Only do it when you're actually traveling for work and when you have production equipment with you. Because if anyone starts abusing the system, it's going to ruin it for the rest of us. And I don't think anyone wants that because it's very helpful when you have to travel for work being able to get all the gear with you on the plane without being upcharged the ridiculous fees. I, I mentioned before, I fly Southwest because they have the best rates, but some of the other ones, some of the other airlines, even with their media rates, it still can be quite expensive because when you look at other airlines, they're charging per bag anyway. Southwest, you get two for free to begin with. So right off the bat, you're already at an advantage with going with Southwest. Now there's people who they don't like Southwest because of the way they do boarding or whatever. They don't have first class. I don't mind so much. I actually kind of like the way they do their boarding process and the two free bags is huge. So if Southwest ever changes that policy, changes their media policy, I'll probably be looking elsewhere. So I encourage Southwest, don't change the policy because that's one of the main reasons that I fly with Southwest so frequently. But 
again, I encourage you, if you're looking at doing something like this where you wanna print out your own media badge, go for it. Just use it for legitimate purposes and don't abuse the system. If you wanna go check out the article that Lee Morris wrote up over on F-Stoppers, I'll link to it down in the description. And then let me know if you have any personal travel stories of you using taking gear with you on a plane or maybe any potential horror stories. There was one time I made a video where we got really lucky Everyone on the plane, their bags got left behind in Phoenix, and our gear, because it was tagged as media, actually made it, and we were very thankful to have it with us on site. But that could have been a total disaster where we'd have to rent locally, kind of pulling things together last minute. Glad it didn't work out that way, but I'm sure, you know, traveling with gear is not always the the safest thing. You try and mitigate those risks as best as possible. I mean, personally, whenever I'm flying with gear, the most important stuff always stays with me in my carry-on. Cameras are small enough now, microphones, audio recorders, uh, memory cards, all that stuff is small enough that I can take it with me. The light stands and some of the lights and some of the bigger, bulkier elements get checked. And if those were lost, you know, it's pretty easy to find a shop where you can rent some C-stands. So I'm usually not too worried about that. But I've heard other stories of people who, you know, they check a camera, they check something really important, and it doesn't make it, it gets lost, whatever it is. And that is what you do not want. So if you have any stories like that, I'd love to hear them down in the comments below. And again, I'll link to that article so you can check it out. And let me know what you think about Lee Morris. Did he, did he do a bad thing exposing this, or is it helpful to reveal all secrets and all tips? I want to be as helpful as I can, revealing everything I can so you guys can learn from me and my experiences. However, I'm, I just really want to make sure I'm cautious and not giving stuff away when people could abuse it and ruin it for the rest of us. 